What are you afraid of? What is it in your life that has got you so fearful about tomorrow that you're having a difficult time living out today? Typically, when people are afraid of something, it breeds inactivity. Not certain what to do, they end up doing nothing at all. The Bible speaks quite a bit about fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Why is it then? Since God has not given us a spirit of fear, but has given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind that so many people who follow him are gripped by fear. I believe it's one of the enemy's primary tools that he uses against believers to create doubt, faithlessness. Even Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, he said, Fear not those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Well, on our recent devotion, we looked at this whole concept of fear because the Bible speaks about fear over 700 times. Obviously, it's an issue with a lot of people. Just last night, I read Judges chapter 7, a very compelling story about a man by the name of Gideon. He was about to go into war against a great army. He had roughly 30,000 soldiers. And God said the soldiers were too many because he knew what would happen. He knew that if Gideon went out with this massive army and won the battle, that people might give the credit to Gideon. They might give the credit to the men of war, and God certainly didn't want that. So God told Gideon to give people who were afraid the opportunity to turn and go home. How many people do you think went home out of fear? You might be amazed to find out that the Scripture says, 20,000 men packed their bags and they went home. Now, you, you can't blame them for fear. I mean, there's a possibility that they might not come home. Well, after those 20,000 men went home, the story goes on to reveal that when it's all said and done, out of those 30,000 soldiers, God had Gideon remove 29,700. Is that crazy? to think that you're going to go into battle with only 300 people? Well, that's exactly what happens. Matter of fact, God confronts Gideon's fear because Gideon was afraid and had a degree of lack of faith. And so God told Gideon to sneak down into the enemy's camp. Imagine how crazy that is. You know, sometimes God asks you to do things that are not practical and pragmatic. And so Gideon traipses down to the enemy camp at 10 o'clock at night. I would imagine probably paralyzed with fear. He walks in, the first thing that he hears is two men from the opposing army, one of them sharing a dream that he had. Now Gideon, of course, doesn't know either one of these two men. The second man, after hearing about this dream, made this statement. He said, that's the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And he said, Gideon's going to come in here and destroy our entire army. Well, obviously that was a confidence builder for Gideon. And the next day, God tells Gideon that him and his 300 men are to go into battle. Now listen to this. You cannot make this stuff up. Go into battle with a trumpet in one hand and a pitcher, a P-I-T-C-H-E-R, not a, like a glass pitcher that you would carry water in. Go into battle with this trumpet and this pitcher. And then when you go into the enemy's camp, I want you to blow the horn, and then I want you to break the, picture, the pictures on the ground. How would you like to be facing a massive army with a trumpet and a pitcher? I would imagine that some of these men would have been men that were very fearful. But obviously, many of these men were men of great faith. Well, the story goes on. It's, it's amazing. They go in, they, they blow the trumpets, and then they break the pitchers. And, of course, these men are in a dead sleep, and they hear, the, they hear the sound of these trumpets. I'm sure it sounded like a whole lot more men than what it was. They hear the breaking of the glass pitchers. And, of course, it's in the middle of the night, and they're in complete disarray. And the next thing you know, this army begins to turn their swords on one another. And the victory is won. Uh, who gets the, the credit? Not Gideon in the army, of course. It had to be something where God got the credit, and that's exactly what happened. But I can't help but wonder about those 20,000 men that went home. 
when they found out that they missed one of the greatest military miraculous battles in history. They missed out on it because they ran from destiny and ran towards fear. Oh, we all have fear, me included. But God does not want us to walk by fear. He wants us to walk by faith. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 that the just shall live by faith. The enemy, he wants to paralyze us. He wants to cause us to live in fear. And what I found is my grandfather told me years ago that most oftentimes the things that you fear the most are the least likely to happen. And I found it to be true. But I've always got to remember, and so do you, that while the enemy is trying to make me fearful, that God is wanting to instill courage. The Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it's impossible to please God. For whoever comes to Him must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Today, God calls you to walk by faith, not by fear. And He promises a reward for those of us that will walk by faith. Oh yeah, there's seasons of fear, but we can pray it away and we can ask God to give us the courage to stand strong and to stand in what He's told us. Never doubt in the light what God has told you in the darkness. Run away from fear. Run to faith. The battle is not yours anyway. It's God's. We'll see you next week on The Louder Voice.